Hello, this is Wendy from the Bass Monkey Workshop. I just wanted to let everybody know, update, I still have bases for sale and I'm looking to make a move, so I'm starting to downsize the collection again. Here's one that's just back from the Luthier, been all fixed up. This is a 1941 Epiphone B1. It's serial number 463. It is completely finished, set up, ready to go. It has Innovation Super Silvers, nice adjustable bridge, the badge with the B1 stamp is in place, new table, tail gut, and uh, end pin. His name is Milton because he's such a dark chocolate color, Epiphone B1. This is a 1950 Epiphone B4. His name is Rudy. He is the beautiful cowboy sunburst color. He has been also, uh, just come back from the Luthier not too long ago, he has a new adjustable bridge with a Fishman full circle pickup. He has the original tailpiece badge. He's also been given a cable and a new end pin. And again, he is that nice dark cowboy sunburst. Everything's there, looks good. This is my 1941 Epiphone B5 named Big Daddy. He's currently not for sale, but he is a beautiful base worth looking at. The absolute height of opulence of an Epiphone base from 1941. He has the gold plated tuners, 24 karat gold, beautiful neck, highly flamed. He has that nice little detail on the back of the perf loop. His edges are the white edged overspray. And he is completely original. Next to this is Mother Maybell. <clears throat> this is the 1941 Gibson. It's a B135. I have not previously offered this base for sale. This is a serious collectible base. Only about 300 of these made. A true Gibson made pre-war. This one is blonde. Uh, you'll be hard pressed to find a mark on this base. It has the original wood bridge. It's wearing gut strings, and it is completely original right down to the tailpiece, end pin, tuners. I have a full history of this instrument, who it belonged to, how it came down through the family, and I also have a Grun appraisal from September 2005, and the appraised value on this instrument was $7,000 in 2005. And again, I can give that appraisal and the complete history and detail of this base. Here's where my showing was today. It was for the uh, Flockless Wonder, the 1800s German base. This particular one is, make me an offer. I gotta get it out of the way. As is this 1936 King base. This is number 552. This is Liza Jean. She too is one of those bases I need to get out of the way. I have her neck, tuners, and tailpiece. She needs some work on her neck. The new fingerboard. There's the neck pocket. Doesn't look too bad. Tab's been taken off. But she'll be a great base. Original finish. This is the 1953 American Standard. Again, this base is completely finished. It has a new ebony fingerboard, adjustable bridge, and it's got the obligato strings on along with the new end pin. This is one of the rare American Standard bases that has the no outside lining to it. There's no, there's no outer rib lining here. These bases are known to be light, loud. It's a base just like Junior Husky played. Very few of these around. They're kind of like a call subspecies. Still have the 1937 K Meyer base. This is the really interesting one with the scroll details and the Czechoslovakian tuners. This base is such an early K from 1937, it doesn't even have a serial number in it. It does not have original finish. It's poorly set up with a handmade bridge and super nails, but nonetheless, it's playable. 
1941 FFM B5. This is Ruben. Not quite sure if I want to sell him yet. He has the golden spiral gut strings on top. The spiral cores on the bottom again. He's completely restored. Last, last base we restored. Behind that is a 1939 Epiphone B5. That needs some neck work. Just talked to Tom Wolf and he said that that type of a neck repair is not a difficult thing these days. A luthier from Virginia. Another B3, 1939. Great base. Needs that same type of repair. Getting to the back of the rack here. This is a 1937K. It's an orchestra bottle, very dark finish. Number 785, it's the lowest serial number base I have. And then the 1953K TV1 base. That's the one that has the beautiful gold scroll at the top. And the finish was taken off the body, but it does have a beautiful quilted maple. Again, all of these bases. I'm looking to downsize and sell. We might be taking a move here soon. So we want to get these bases into a new home where they can be enjoyed and played. And I'll just make mention, there lays my 1937 American Standard named Junior after Junior Husky and he's just back from James Condino with a brand new neck and it is a fantastic base. Okay folks, as always, if you need a vintage American-made plywood base, I have plenty to share. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.